Great. Hello, this is Bob Gray Sr. Welcome to Ministry Moments. Go to Ministry Moments YouTube and Bob Gray Sr. and subscribe. That way you'll get it every week and you can look at it at your, you're busy, I'm busy, and can look at it at your own convenience. Or you go to solvechurchproblems.com and subscribe there. And uh, and I would suggest that one because there's a lot of tools that you can add to your toolbox that will be of help to you as, as a as a leader, as a Christian. And uh, so I hope that you'll hope that you'll do that. And also podcasts, Soft Charge Problem podcast is available every week on your whatever your podcast provider is. And I think that that again you can listen to it at your own. Uh, pace and and listen to it uh, when you have time because you're busy and I'm busy. Today I want to talk to you about plugging the back door, plugging the back door. A uh, fella called me from Ohio, and he said years ago, years ago, he said I'm not going to tell you, give you my name, but I, I want to talk to you. <laughs> I thought, well, that's a blessing. He said, how many do you keep? How many do you keep? You baptize all those people. How many do you keep? And I said to him, well, uh, you keep one out of 10. I keep 10 out of 100. Nobody keeps any more than anybody else. You just reach more people. Um, and, 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 it, and it's true. <laughs> Nobody keeps anybody. You, I'm scared to death to preach like you preach. Let me tell you a, a little motto of mine. What attracts, detracts, and what detracts, attracts. Here's two couples. First couple comes to church and I'm throwing a fit. They go home and the wife says, well, we'll never go back there again. Never. Did you hear the jokes and the, the sarcasm? Will How hard he was on it. We'll never go back there again. And so then another couple, comes, here's the same sermon, and they go home. And the man looks at the wife and says, man, that was good. Wow. Wow, did you see all those people getting saved, baptized? Man, and that preaching was good. It's straight down the line. We're going back. You see what attracts, detracts, and what detracts, attracts. I'm not trying to bring God down to man. I'm trying to be man, bring man up to God. And uh, a fellow, one of our graduates in West Virginia called me. He said, Brother Gray, I, I still get your cassette, cassette tapes. I will let in. He said, man, I like that preaching. He said, but I'm scared to death to do it. Help me. And I said, sure, I'd be glad to. I said, I preach to keep my wife right and my children right. That's what I do. And the rest of them can listen in. Now, that's the kind of love I had for the people I pastored. I, I, I mean that. I preach to keep my wife right, my children right. My daughters aren't going to lay out in the front lawn in a bikini trying to get you to feel comfortable with, with our stand, lack of standards. Not good. Everybody has standards. You can't go to public school naked. <laughs> how dare you tell us how to dress? Now, let me talk to you about plugging the back door. Can I do that? All right, number one, personal soul winning brings them in the front door. Personal soul winning brings them in the front door. We had eight soul winning times at our, at our, at our church for, for three decades. Now, if somebody said, I can't make it Thursday night or Friday afternoon or Saturday morning or Sunday afternoon or whatever it was, I said, when can you make it? And then I would either go with them or send a staff man with them. But we would accommodate them at their time to make sure they had opportunity to win souls and see it happen. So plug in the back door. Number one, personal sewing brings them in the front door. Number two, small Sunday school classes keep them. Small Sunday school classes keep them. Your discipleship program, if you can't get their carcass out of bed and get them to Sunday school, you're not going to disciple anybody. A disciple is a disciplined one. Uh, so our discipleship program is 945 on Sunday morning in a Sunday school class, a small Sunday school class. So number one, uh, personal sorting brings them in the front door. You want them to Christ, pick them up, bring them with you, and don't expect them to drive in, come in their babies, because they receive Christ does not mean they receive character. If they're used to sleeping until noon on Sunday and watching NFL today, then they're going to do it again. So you say, look, I'll pick you up nine o'clock or eight 30 and maybe we'll get a cup of coffee out the, on the way to church and spend a little time together. They like that. They like that. All right. And, and, it, and it plugs you into their world and them into your world. All right. Person, we're talking about plug in the back door. Now, number one, uh, personal sewing brings them in the front door. Number two, small Sunday school classes keeps them small Sunday school classes. Keep them. Jesus had 12 had one that went astray. 
uh, but he turned the world right side up with with eleven. Now, what in the world makes you think you can handle a hundred? What, what in the world? Brother Howes in the early seventies had eight hundred Sunday school classes that averaged twenty to twenty five apiece. He understood it. The A bus routes didn't run more than twenty to twenty five on average. Now Roy and JoJo Moffat were crazy; uh, they run a hundred, but they were a phenom. Uh, and I'm just telling you, that's just the way that works. Now, it went crazy after the college students got there. Uh, and, and, and the college students run 75 and 100 on a bus. They were super excited. But the truth is, First Baptist Church, the world's largest Sunday school, was built on small numbers. It really was. All right. So number one, a personal sewing brings them in the front door. No other way to get them there. There's only so many transfers. You're not going to get them all. You're not, there's only so many city councilmen, bankers, and mayors, and so on. So if you think you got, there's only so many transfers. I just wish I could have cleaned up on one split in the three decades. I didn't. I provided the, the material for them. They ought to thank me. Uh, number one, personal soul winning brings them in the front door. Number two, small Sunday school classes keeps them. Number three, soul winning must, uh, the soul winner must nurture the babies in Christ. The soul winner must nurture the babes in Christ. Please don't leave me. The soul winner must nurture the babies in Christ. I had a van, van on purpose, because I would lead people to Christ and one a day. And I'd have five lined up by Sunday night. On average, two would come. On average, one would get baptized. But boy, I'd focus in on that, on that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And what I would do was I would say, will you help me? I would go by and pick them up, and we'd, I'd say, now, where do we go from here? And they'd tell me what to go. Then it got to where the van, after about six weeks, then they started coming in their own. But I nurtured them. I took time for them. And you're going to have to do the same thing. We're talking about plugging the back door now. Number one, personal sewing brings them in the front door. Number two, small Sunday school classes keeps them. Everybody knows that. They know their name. They know everything about them. They can't wait to see them because they're small, small. Okay, three, so the soul winners must nurture the convert. The soul winner must nurture the babies, their babies. And I said a while ago, you don't have a kid bring it home from the hospital, put it in the crib and say, hey, kid, supper's at six. If you're hungry, you'll come to the table. You can't say, well, if they meant it, they'd have been here. They're babies. They're carnal. They're babies. Now, what do you expect from them? And so you must understand, grasp that thought. We're talking about plugging the back door. Personal sewing brings them in the front door. You win souls, line them up and get them there to church. Now, we get them all, but you'll get some. Number two, small Sunday school classes keeps them. All right, number three, the soul winner must nurture the babies. Number four, the soul winners must pick them up for Sunday school. There's got to be a period of time, six weeks, six months. I don't, I don't know. You, Each one's different. Pick them up. They, you've already picked them up once, brought them to church, introduced them to a Sunday school teacher, walked them down the aisle and got them baptized. Now you go back and pick them up for Sunday night. You go back and pick them up for Wednesday night and then pick them back up again for their Sunday school class the next Sunday. Get in the habit of them leaving their house and going to the house of God. But you've got to nurture them. You've got to pick their babies. That's what you do with a baby in a crib. You pick it up, change the diaper. What do you burp the thing, you know? All right. We're talking about plugging the back door. Number one, personal sewing brings them in the front door. Again, transfers is not going to work. Go ahead and try and get the music that everybody likes and, and try to get them in. Bill Hybels did it, ran 15,000 outside of Chicago on Sunday morning, then did a, a study and found that they didn't know the Bible. <laughs> He said, I got the crowds, but I didn't have Christians. That's what he said. I'm not making up. He said, I ran the article in the Baptist magazine because one of the men that was on that board that ran that thing gave it to me. That's how I got it. Um, talking about plugging the back door. Number one, personal sewing brings them in the front door. Number two, small Sunday school classes keeps them in. Number three, so the soul winner must nurture the, their babies. Nurture them. That's a feminine term, by the way. Number four, soul winners, you've got, you've got to pick them up. You have to pick them up, transport them to Sunday school, transport them back Sunday night, pick them up for Wednesday. I'll see you uh, Wednesday night now. I'll pick you up at seven o'clock uh, and pick them up and then bring them. Um, 
Number five, we're talking about plugging the back door. When the Sunday school class gets to 20 or more, split it. When the Sunday school class gets to 20 or more, split it. Um, keep that personal touch. Don't, don't keep it. Keep that personal touch. Um, number six, accurate Sunday school rules. You've got to have, you've got to have addresses, phone numbers, emails nowadays, uh, everything about it. You've got that, you've got to have that. You've got to have it. So have accurate Sunday school rules, accurate Sunday school rules. That way you can follow up on them. And by the way, if you have a small class, you can visit absentees. What's the biggest gripe, pastors? Oh, I can't get my teachers to visit absentees. Well, you're killing them. <laughs> got too many to follow up on. They can visit their regulars and their absentees if you've got a small role. All right. We're talking about plugging the back door. Personal sorting brings them in the front door. Number two, small Sunday school classes keep them in. Number three, the soul winner must nurture the babies. You've got to nurture them, take time for them. Number four, the soul winner must pick them up and bring them back to church. You've got to pick them up, get in the habit, then pick them up, bring them, fellowshipping with them, fellowshipping with them, getting them there to your Sunday night, Wednesday night, and so on, and take them soul winning with you. All right, number five, the Sunday school teacher pastors the new the newborns. The Sunday school teacher pastors the newborns. Uh, 800 Sunday school classes when we were in Hammond in the early 70s, they were all, Brother Howes used them as pastors. So he pastored the pastors. <laughs> They're the ones that had the personal contact. I had four children when I was, when I was there in Hammond. Actually, I was in Gary, beautiful Gary, Indiana. We were the only white people in Gary, Indiana. But uh, wow, we had Sunday school teachers come to the house to visit our children. Don't you think that didn't excite me as a dad? You know it did. All right. So the Sunday school teacher pastors the, the, the new newborns. Number five, actually six, I'm sorry. When the Sunday school class gets to 20, then split it. Get it down to where it can be handled. Number seven, accurate Sunday school rules. You've got to have accurate Sunday school rules. Number eight, win their family and friends. Don't let it just stop with you winning them. Find out about their family in town. Find out about their friends. Find out about where they work. And make yourself available to be able to go to their, their family members and present the gospel to them because it'll mean something. We're talking about plugging the back door now. And one personal sewing brings them in the front door. Number two, small Sunday school classes keeps them in. Number three, the soul winner must nurture the newborn babes. Now, number four, the soul winner must pick them up and get them back and pick them up for Sunday night, pick them up for Wednesday night, pick them up for soul winning on Thursday night. The Sunday school teacher pastors, number five, the Sunday school teacher pastors the newborn babes. Number six, when the Sunday school class gets 20 or plus, split the thing so they can still have that personal touch. Uh, Accurate Sunday school rules is vital. All the information should be filled out. You know, when you have uh, graduation in the summer, you promote to the next class. It's terrible when you don't give the new teacher accurate rules. How in the world are they going to keep up with them? They can't. So that's a, that's a biggie. That's a biggie. All right. Then when they're family and friends. We're talking about plugging the back door. It can be done. Our church grew from 159 to averaging 2,000 in all of our Sunday schools. I know it works. 10,000 members, it worked, and it will work anywhere. And by the way, this is this is in the 90s. So it wasn't the 60s, it wasn't the 70s, it wasn't the 80s. Well, that's what they did back. No, we proved it could be done in the 90s and the early 2000s. So we did it. If we can do it, anybody can do it. God bless you. Uh, have a great day, soul winning. Win somebody, line them up for church, get them into a Sunday school class on Sunday. God bless you. Have a great weekend.